So can you give me an example of how you guys do this at, at Playwire? Sure. So I'll just take one example of a topic that we go over, which is header bidding. And if you're, you know, into ad monetization and really nerdy, you'll know what that means. It's essentially, it's, it's a piece of technology used to serve ads and increase competition for those ads. So you make more money. I'm going, I'm really, really oversimplifying it, but in general, and what we've done in order to create content around this cluster is we have this really in-depth guide on how to do header bidding. If you want to do it yourself, it's 4,000 words. It's super in-depth. It's like reading a book. And then we have our supplemental content, which makes up the breadth part of the T, which is a bunch of subtopic articles on smaller topics within header bidding as a category, right? So it might be, what is a header bidding wrapper? How do you build a header bidding integration? We're starting to get a little bit longer tail with the keywords that are related to header bidding, the, the high level topic, if you will. And then what we've done is interlink that in a hub and spoke type of diagram. So you have your pillar, your long form piece of content in the center, and that needs to link out to all of those subtopic mm. articles. And each of those subtopic articles need to link back in towards the pillar. And really when Google sees this group of content, it says, oh, you guys really understand header bidding as a concept. Therefore, all of those pieces start to rank better for the keywords that they're identified for. And that's really how, how a cluster gets executed. There's a bunch of research and I definitely piggyback off of people that have you know, done more than me. I worked really closely with a colleague of mine. Her name is Liz Murphy and she's where I get these numbers from. So I can't claim full credit for them by any stretch. But usually what you want to do is about 4,000 words for the long piece of content or more. And then each of the subtopic articles is somewhere between a thousand and 1500 words. And you want somewhere between eight and 22 of those subtopic articles. It depends on how competitive the keywords are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Great example. And I really like that image of the, the wheel, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. It's the, easier the, to visualize that way. <laughs> yeah. Right. The main thing at the center, like the main mm -hmm. nugget, and then everything's spoken out and it's all connected going both ways. Correct. Basically. Right. Okay. So this seems like a really good strategy, right? For SEO and to, as you said, let Google yep. know, like, Hey, we, we really know what we're talking about on this topic. How can you mess this up? What should you not do when trying to put this into action? Well, I would say, honestly, the biggest thing where I see people mess up is just not finishing because it's a long term play, right? Mm. It's, you know, if we go between eight and 22 subtopic articles plus the long piece of content, we're talking at least about nine pieces of content to finish a single cluster, right? Like it's not something that you just do them all at once and then release them. It fits into your overall editorial calendar. And depending on the volume of content that you produce once a week, twice a week, three times a week, it can take a while to produce, right? And get all the way to the finish line. Mm. I don't know about other marketers, but there usually is a lot of requests in the marketing department that tend to mm. distract us. Oh, we need this, we need that. And so it, it can mm -hmm. push us off the plan if we're not just consistent with that regular production and getting to the end of the strategy. So quite honestly, the biggest mistake I see mm. is people just not finishing. So it doesn't even get off the ground. If you do get mm. off the ground, the biggest mistake that I see is people not making the most of content that's already out there and produced, that's coming mm. back and refreshing it, that's re-optimizing it, that's making sure that we're constantly keeping an eye on it to get it across the finish line. What you'll find is that you'll release content and then within a few months, you'll start to see it ranking. And then you'll just kind of like, wait, let it keep mm, growing in the yeah. rankings. But what you can really do is once you see it start ranking, say, oh, okay, there's my my reminder to go re-optimize it and accelerate it up through the rankings. And so a lot of people don't take advantage of that because it's not like exciting and new. It's not a new piece of content. I don't want to go back and do another one, but that's actually where the bulk of the results come from.